What's up, people? Let's have a little talk about unconventional mobile antennas. Or in some circles, undercover antennas, other circles, discrete antennas. Uh, basically, vehicle antennas that don't look like vehicle two-way radio ham antennas. Just so you could be uh, the ultimate gray man, I guess. Uh, we're playing with these terms. They don't mean shit. But you get the gist of it. I have a little show and tell here just to show the different types and uh, you know as far as hiding your shit it, it all depends on the imagination and making it work pretty much. Uh, you could be a, a sick little bastard and, and hide it really discreetly where they'll never find it or, or the attitude of uh, I'm up they see me I'm down you know that sort of thing. In any event uh, I, I thought I'll bring out all this crap here since I had them in the shop and I was in that sort of mode of, of doing an undercover antenna on a vehicle and show you what the past has has shown us before. Some of it is true today but uh, some of the some of this these methods are somewhat obsolete because the technology of today's is a bit obsolete now but still viable in, 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 in every sense of the word. Another thing too I like to break, bring up is uh, on my first video of uh, undercover blunder. I thought that would be an okay video. You know, there's a lot of you know interest there and everything, and I got you know some good results. Not that I really give two shits about the results of view counts and clickbait and all that stuff, but there's one aspect of it that sort of had me confused. In the first 24-hour period of that video being up, I got about 13 dislikes. And within the first couple of hours, I think I had something like eight or nine. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, what's up with this noise? And, and like I said, not that I care. I'm, you know, if you're on YouTube or whatever, you have to have thick skin about stuff like that. And, and you know, I didn't take, I didn't think too much of it other than it kind of differ from the normal anomaly that happens with my little videos here, my channel. I don't get that sort of a response mainly it's over time so if I have a video up uh, that's like three years old then yeah I would have you know 13 or 15 or 25 you know dislikes within that long time periods but not right in the 24 hour period so I, I was just wondering if I could ask any of you guys that disliked it you know personally I don't care like I said uh, what was it that that triggered most people out there about about that particular video I mean was it because I was working for law enforcement maybe you no know, I got a lot of you know anti-government you know uh, NWO type you know viewers out there and and I'm not and I'm not dogging you guys at all I mean I don't care who watches my videos really uh, like I said I I got a, a core amount of people out there that that just are geeks like me and th those are the guys who really you know comment and participate and give me ideas and I give them ideas you know a li little exchange there amongst us geeks and radio enthusiasts and, and that also like to dabble in prepping and and the extreme of you know societal collapse scenario and stuff like that that's where I like to sort of lean to and, and you know guys I like to skirt the system in a way in that case I just would like to know what what was up was it because of my involvement with law enforcement as far as maintaining their gear uh, not enough information because I had to be really vague about it because we don't want to show the bad guys what to look out for or I don't know may, maybe the video just sucked and, and that was it really and I'm just thinking too much into it but uh, if, if you come forward either a PM or a, a line down in the comments uh, I'll promise that I would you know get rid of it if people start to pounce on you you know cuz you know or, or whatever just just a little anomaly there that I noticed from the last video but screw all that let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this video here so there's like many types of uh, undercover antennas there throughout the years and depending on the model of the cars uh, typically, it's just a vehicle with antenna from the AM FM radio there. And here's a, a representation of one. And this bolts down to the, to the spot that it is, that where it goes at. And uh, with this, you, you can't tell whatsoever. Even 
the uh, cabling that's stuffed within this uh, roll here is, is different, but looking at it, you can't tell whatsoever. And it interfaces with the vehicle stock AM FM radio with another device that kind of split the signal between that and your two-way radio like something like this a dual band radio so typically something like this would go into you know the front quarter fender there uh, to act as an, the, a, the vehicles AM FM radio it's really ef effective and it works pretty well so here in the garage this is a bad uh, example to show here on a scope in full motion uh, maybe because it's not installed in the vehicle there's no ground plane it's not within the system you know uh, it's not tuning right it's supposed to be a a VHF low band VHF uh, antenna here and uh, it's not showing a really good return loss there maybe a minus eight at that at a certain low band frequency historically VHF low band antennas just suck ass to begin with because this whip here is supposed to be way bigger for frequencies like in the six meter range you know 50 megahertz 40s 30s so we're asking a lot out of this antenna for low band VHF and I know you guys are gonna ask me why the hell are you gonna do low band VHF on an undercover vehicle well I say the same thing too but uh, I don't that that is beyond my pay grade so it's it's a case of uh, in that particular scenario that it's technically feasible barely but tactically stupid it is what it is can't control it so back not so long ago uh, a lot of the vehicles were using uh, cellular phone uh, look-alikes I think this one here is called an on glass disguise mobile antenna cellular look-alike and the company here is uh, antenna specialist I don't know if they exist anymore or have been absorbed but uh, this is an old stock that I had around the shop that we never used and uh, this is what it looks like here's the uh, the glass mount antenna and it's a dual band antenna both for VHF and UHF and uh, and here's the adhesive part that hooks up to your glass uh, on the back of the vehicle so basically what you're looking at is uh, an antenna that sticks out in the back of, uh, of the vehicle like this or or in main, many cases that I've seen on the side on the side just like that this one's a little bit too tall for this but in bigger vehicles like uh, Suburbans and Chevy Tahoe's or, or whatever you got the real estate to do that big disadvantage about the glass mount antennas is uh, they're a bit more prone to breaking or being ripped off especially if you go through a, uh, a car wash or something to that effect happens all the time surprisingly they are tough as nails uh, I've seen quite a few of them that just went through the ringer for a good three or four years but but they will get ripped off uh, or, or ripped apart by vandals or whatever and car washes most mostly now this little guy here is not advertised or uh, marketed as an undercover antenna uh, I forgot what this was marketed for I mean it's it's a somewhat of a sleeper antenna as far as marketing out there but it comes in this little package here and it's from the company Larson it's a 450 to 470 megahertz flexible blade style antenna uh, there's the pertinent information if you guys want it and it comes in this packaging here and then the little sticky sort of double-sided sticky tape there uh, to stick on the antenna the idea of this is to stick this on to the side of your uh, window use that as your uh, UHF frequency radio uh, UHF frequency such as this maybe uh, what this will actually work really well with is GMRS uh, radios out there for people who don't wanna pull coals in their vehicles again and uh, so far on the scope it's scoping up is scoping out within spec there like right there is 445 megahertz and I got a minus 14 dBm return loss which is acceptable but like I said it was 
it was made for 450 so there is 455 454 minus 17 really good there uh, on the upper end of that 470 minus 16 so technically on the scope here it tests really good as far as uh, return loss and being within spec uh, this I bought with my own money because I was you know trying to outfit my vehicles or do something with UHF frequencies like GMRS or whatever and this could be a solution for me to install this in my uh, Toyota RAV4 there that's still in what do you call that that's still in warranty and stuff like that so I don't want to have to you know pull coals in it and whatnot so that could be a solution for the everyday uh, prepper as well or anybody out there that operated in that frequency range I don't know if it works that's the thing so perhaps later on maybe I'll play with this again uh, it's been in my shelves here forever and, and I haven't really played with it but uh, we'll see we'll see but this could be an option as well though not proven so pretty much the setup will be just like stow you know put this uh, stick this onto your glass uh, inside the vehicle whatever and it hooks up to the back of your radio just like that within your vehicle don't know if this will have high reflective uh, power out when when it's up against the glass of a vehicle I don't know that yet so uh, personally I think I will have high reflective uh, readings off of this where where it's not gonna work very well uh, other than that this could be a good outside antenna you know for HTs or whatever who knows it could probably be hooked up to something like this in your tent or something outside of a vehicle setup uh, and, and work it that way you know maybe put some paracord there and run it up a tree or something uh, that could be viable where you won't get a high reflective uh, uh, signal going back into your radio uh, causing you to have poor communications so here's my uh, European style AM FM antenna there the uh, disguise antenna for two-way radios and here's part of it here and it looks just like the stock stuff and but there's a hell of a lot more to this than just this little piece right here actually it's all stuck within this box here uh, a whole network of stuff there to make this thing work the way it's supposed to work I can again I can't show you because it's a it's somewhat of a dead giveaway and I don't want that to be seen but for the most part this is what's indistinguishable from the real uh, OEM equipment from the vehicle and what you see there now you know you've seen this before this radio here this antenna is built to do two radios uh, 150 megahertz and 800 megahertz so basically it will go into a duplexer this guy right here this is not for this equipment there this is for something else but it's the similar it's the same concept and this is what I got going on in my service vehicle instead I have three ports going to go out into one antenna but in this case you got two radios you got the VHF radio here will go in this port 800 megahertz radio will go in this port and then the one antenna is this guy right here that can handle both and this is what it looks like on the 150 megahertz uh, port there that little dip right there and it's horrible actually right there at its lowest dip there 170 is minus 8 dBm's uh, this is not the ideal location to for testing uh, on this thing here so I would imagine they took into account a ground plane and stuff like that and guys I don't pretend to know what the science behind this is I mean there's a lot smarter guys that you know that engineer this stuff so I'm gonna put a makeshift ground plane there that would somewhat resemble a vehicle and there it is right there this plate right there there's the antenna it'll somewhat look like what's going on on top of a vehicle and look at the difference right there at that same point it's minus 14 but I can see a minus 20 at like 165 megahertz 
Uh, both my hands are taken so I can't move that dial around. There you go. 160 megahertz at minus 19 dBm's return loss. That's pretty good. Now that was the VHF radio antenna port right here. Now we're going to do the 800 megahertz port here. See what that looks like. Okay, we got that interface there. And that's what it looks like right there. So here at 850 megahertz, we're getting a minus 15. Around that frequency range you'll see a lot of ringing and a lot of weird looking stuff it's not as clean as the lower frequencies as far as looking it at a, a scope like this so uh, I consider this pretty pretty good still let's put a ground plane there see what, if it cleans that up a bit yep I got better results at a minus 27 with a ground plane and I, and for this wavelength there I don't need a big huge ground plane uh, three or four inches will suffice but nonetheless it's doing a kick-ass job right there I could imagine what it'll look like when it's uh, on the vehicle itself here I'm gonna take the ground plane off and the whole thing crashes down well I guess the next step for this puppy here is to install it in the vehicle and uh, then we'll check out the uh, actual performance in in its you know regular configuration uh, and that'll be coming up next week here but uh, here's a little bit of a sticker shock here this system here the just this antenna with the uh, supporting system dual band let's say a lot of you guys want to do 150 and UHF which is most of you guys uh, something like that will cost you uh, roughly 500 bucks for this outfit right here yeah very steep and why even bother me showing this stuff if it's out of the league of many of us including myself especially myself well we could probably hack something to make it look like this or you know have a replica of this that we could do ourselves uh, like here my home project uh, I want to have bigger capabilities for my uh, this cone antenna on top of the hill but something like that will cost 600 bucks with all the filters and and triplexers and stuff like that some digging uh, in the internet you could find stuff that's half that price or even a quarter of that price and that's where I'm leaning towards I may not get into a project like this as far as you know prepper undercover or discrete antennas at a reasonable cost but here's an idea that you guys could go out to the interwebs and run with it. Google is your friend, as they say. Uh, for me, uh, I'm still taking my projects one step out of the time. Right now, I'm doing my home comm center project with multiple radios with limited amount of antennas on top of the hill, which is a scenario that a lot of us have. You know, yeah, I'll bring out all this high dollar stuff that going to other people's equipment you know for their comp solution but then again I like to kind of dumb that down you know look at the nuts and bolts of it boil it down into something that we could use at a reasonable cost and that's my goal you know and to show you guys and to sort of uh, let you guys be aware of what's out there and the main focus too is not to be taken you know there's a lot of uh, snake oil salesmen out there and a lot of people that talk a lot of shit but don't prove it and that's with everything so uh, I think I rambled enough and uh, next time you'll see me we'll be putting this thing in and see what this thing looks like okay guys take it easy